theatrical release. Snoop Dogg, the big homies on board as a producer. Uh, we got this red carpet. We got so much magic and energy. And, you know, we haven't had an event like this on the West Coast since Straight Outta Compton. And, um, you know, Colors, Minister Society, uh, Poetic Justice, Set It Off, uh, Straight Outta Compton, Training Day. Um, and this happens to be the most diverse film of any South Central LA film. So shout out to my, the king himself, right? My brother, John Singleton, who put me on, baby boy. Um, so I'm just grateful, you know, when I say the most diverse cast, only I can say that. This is the Fast and the Furious of South Central cinema. Gonna be on the edge of your seat. It's a heist movie, it's a crime thriller. It's, it's a real crazy movie. And I think, in my mind, we've already won. And all I want is for the world to get out there and experience this movie. Labor Day weekend, there's nothing else that matters as much as 1992. So don't be 30 years old trying to get your tickets at the last minute. Be out there sitting on the front row with your girlfriend for date night rubbing your neck because you're up in there watching the movie like that. You know what I'm saying? That's why I can't wait for the world to finally get a hold of this magic called 1992. I lived this in 92, yeah. So this was a God wink moment. 30 years later, here we are. It was really great to work with him. He's a very intense actor. Every time he shows up, he brings it. He knows his material inside and out. Uh, so I think just seeing a professional like that work uh, is always, I'm always, you know, in admiration of, of that kind of dedication to the craft. Um, getting to work with him on a personal level was really fun. He's a no bullshit kind of guy. He's fun, he's crass. Uh, and getting to hear about his experiences through his 40-year career in Hollywood was really great. A lot of times we see Tyrese as this fun, bombastic kind of character in the Fast Furious uh, franchises, but you know this he dug deep and he really went for something a little more raw, a little more gritty. Uh, so I thought he did a great job. Just having you know having Snoop on board is so cool. I mean, Snoop's as as big as he's ever been right now. He's hosting the Olympics. He's doing things I never thought I'd see Snoop Dogg do, and I love it. So it's great. One of the reasons was I actually lived through 1992, so I understood you know a couple of things that actually happened in that movie, and I felt like the story and you know the, the great acting and the great directing. I wanted to be a part of it in any way I could, and it just felt like it was a natural culmination considering that Death Row Records was really, you know, founded in 91, 92. Um, it just was so much around that year and around this whole movie that just made sense to come together. Well, you know, the police brutality has always been a major, you know, situation out here. That's where the rappers would always rap about it. And then when that actually happened, it made the rappers seem like they were, you know, telling the future, either they seen the, or they seen the future. And then it spoke to the justice system of how we're treated unfairly. So it was like all of that in the equation of us being rappers and being young and adolescents who have faced criminal cases and faced court, it just didn't feel right and it felt like we was an uprising within us where we had to rise. And you know, when those things happen, they're not planned and they're not timed, they just happen. It's a spontaneous moment and I felt like that moment is just as important as this movie because it tells you exactly how it happened and why it happened. Man, rest in peace, Ray Liotta. Shout out to his family for allowing this movie to actually come out. I mean, he's one of the greatest actors to ever grace the screen, and he did a phenomenal job. He left it all on the screen. If this is his last performance, it is uh, Oscar worthy, if you ask me. I love the way Tyrese can just jump in character and become that person, and you believe him the whole movie. This was deep because he had to play a father of a young teenager in the city of Los Angeles dealing with all of the things that he probably was dealing with as a teenager. So to reverse that and to create a, a character and to make it believable, have passion, heart, soul. I mean, I rooted for him on screen. I really rooted for his character. Well, 92, it felt good. You know, I was trying to figure out who I wanted to be and what I was trying to do. And, you know, Dr. Dre and the whole Death Row family took me under their arms and created my whole vision on who I wanted to be and helped me to become who I am. So to be able to do it again 30 years later as the owner of the record label and me and Dre still having a beautiful you know, brotherhood, that's what it's all about.
about maintaining that friendship and putting good, good music and good chemistry back into the world, you know. When we make music, people love it. They, they smile, they dance to it, they reminisce, there's moments connected to it. So we just wanted to give you one more moment. Just a great piece of art. I just want people just to enjoy a great piece of art. There's really so many messages and lessons in here, it's hard to try to pinpoint one as opposed to just respect the art and the craft and no one understand that this actually happened. It's a real story and we can be better by watching movies like this. It kind of reveals a lot about LA that people don't know about 1992. I play a gang member who too often is thought of as just a destructive member of the community, but in actuality, a lot of the gang activity, even during the riots in L.A. in 1992, was helping communities, was helping put families back together, was helping stopping violence, sometimes from police officers. So my character is kind of a window into the other part of the story that people don't know about, even amidst all this other exciting action heist stuff. I play the bad guy, which means I, have to, I get to have all the fun. And um, just trying to keep the tension up in the movie, I play Ray Liotta's right-hand man. And we're out here to uh, create some damage and earn some money. But it's not going according to plan. Well, you know, you come in and you have someone like Ray, Li uh, Ray Liotta. It's, uh, it's pretty taunting because I grew up watching his movies and, you know, look up to him. And then uh, you find someone really quiet who sits in the, you know, his director's chair on set all day, buried in the script. He doesn't, he doesn't, you know, spend time in the trailer. He just basically works the whole time. And then he gets up and it's like a volcano. It just erupts. So there's not a lot of going on in between. He saves everything for the shot. So he keeps it really fresh and exciting and but a kind person always has been kind to me and I'm, I feel really privileged to have this opportunity to have worked with him one last time. It's an amazing film. You know, um, you know I've been in this a long time and so for me to get a great film on Labor Day weekend is amazing. <laughs> it's, it's exciting because, you know, as, as Ray Leal is one of his last projects to work on and so, uh, you know, hopefully we did him proud. It's about a father and son bond and uh, I'm a father, my son actually plays in the NBA. His name is Malik Beasley. So um, I understand the father and son dynamic and, and um, you know, just the loving interest of the father and son. I, I don't even have the words to say to have a Snoop Dogg, you know, come on board for this project, especially it's about LA and LA, and, you know, LA riots and all that stuff. But it's like to have Snoop Dogg come on board, at the, especially at this time where he's the face of the Olympics. <laughs> It's an honor, I'm not gonna lie. You know, I, I've had a long 10 year doing this. I'm nine years into the game. To share a stage and, and, and a screen with guys that are like Tyrese and you know, Ray Liotta and Scott Eastwood, it's a testament to the work I've put in so far, you know? And so, and so to have this moment right now, it's one I'm definitely gonna remember, for sure. For him to be in the game as long as he's been in, for me to be, you know, this is my first time on screen with him. Having this moment be a moment where it could be, you know, probably his best performance. I'm, I'm honored by that, and I got to give him his flowers. Like, this man has been killing it for, for so long, and to have a serious role, you know, this, at this journey in his career, you know, it's, it's, it's something monumental, and uh, I'm going to keep rooting him on, but he's done a phenomenal job. You know, we went through, we went through something kind of similar to the situation back in 2020, and so for the young guys, I, I was born in 98. This, you know, obviously based in 1992. We didn't get to see that time and what had happened, but... It's not necessarily about the riots, it's not about the looting. It's about an innocent black man being killed and, you know, what we could take away from those situations, how we could be the change. And so, you know, it's a movement, it's a movement. And, uh, you know, Black Lives Matter for sure. Yeah. I loved uh, the relationships, the father-son relationships that this movie has. I also love the action. I think it's this really wonderful taste of these 90s classic movies. But uh, it's, the relationships are so strong, it's not something I've seen in an action movie before. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited for people to enjoy it, and I just loved, I really loved the character, and I, you know, the opportunity to work with Ray was something I couldn't pass up, you know. So Dennis is uh, part of this crime family, and, you know, he feels a bit of a fish out of water. He's not, he's not used to this lifestyle, but he does it because he loves his, his father and his brother. He wants to connect his family, but he finds himself in these situations he's not really equipped for. And I think he, throughout the film, he realizes the kind of man his dad is. I think he idolizes his man, or his dad, and he, and he kind of realizes that he's not who he thought he was. 
I mean, Ray brought an incredible intensity to the set, uh, and he's someone who you can rehearse something five times, and then when they call action, he'll do something completely different, which is really exciting as an actor. You know, you get to show up and you get to really be in the moment. You get to just uh, witness it and then react and. Yeah, he brought, he brought everybody alive. He, he gave them this fire that was really wonderful. You know, I hope people realize, you know, we filmed this in 2021, right after the 2020, you know, protests in L.A., and I think that I hope people take away the fact that history repeats itself. Uh, I hope the relationships are so strong in this. I hope people take, take away the idea of building the relationships that are close to them, because that's what we got, you know? Oh God, I am overwhelmed. So many beautiful faces, so many friends, so many family. I just can't say thank you enough to the team over at Lionsgate, to our beautiful director, Ariel Roman, to my castmates, and to all the fans that'll show up and watch this movie. This movie is a very special LA film, and we need your support, and we have your support, and so I'm just grateful. Antoine is on a very real journey that so many young men and women across America, especially in inner black cities, what they experience. He's kind of the blueprints of the life that they live. And so Antoine has this coming of age kind of story where he deals with neglect. He deals with uh, not having a father and his mother. He comes from a broken home. And so Antoine really is fighting for love. He's fighting for a voice. He's fighting to understand himself. And it kind of comes across in his relationship with his father. Tyrese is intense on set anyway. Um, I think, first of all, thank you Tyrese for just curating such a beautiful relationship so we can make such a beautiful film. Really, it took a lot of hard work and we improved a lot of scenes for this movie. We wanted the, the characters and the relationship to feel very authentic to how it actually feels to come from a broken home, especially to not have a relationship with your father. And so we did a lot of work, laid great foundation to make that happen, and um, I, I couldn't be more proud. First of all, rest in peace, Ray Liotta. And I'm gonna try to say this without getting emotional simply because to be here just brings back all of the beautiful memories that we shared on set. Um, Ray was fantastic. He, he brought a performance out of me that I've, I've never seen, uh, that I never knew that I was capable of. Ray, funny enough, he didn't talk to me for the first two weeks of filming. And he did it purposefully because our characters are at odds and there's this giant rift between the, the two worlds that we live in. And he wanted genuine fear. And so Ray, he, he, is a, he is a true gift to all actors across America. And if you have had the experience working with him, you understand what I mean. Rest in peace, Ray. Thank you so much, Ray. Hey, but Ray, well, that was our second film together. We did the Iceman exactly a decade ago. I love how you know tenacious he was. He was so on point. He never left the set. He was like, for me, he was an amazing partner because Ray, after he trusted me, so we had like kind of like a partnership that we could really manipulate moments together without anybody knows that he was together. So he was a real partner for me, and um, I'll miss him. He was an amazing friend and um, a great artist. And you know, that's life, so I, I hope he would be proud, you know, watching his last movie, going all full throttle. <laughs> and I chose to do this movie when I read it for the first time, it was just after the George Floyd um, Minneapolis um, event. So I was like, how ironic that I'm doing a movie that happened 28 years ago, and I feel that I'm not reading it, and I was just like, it's still happening. So an OG like Snoop, you know, is something that this movie need to have. Because if we don't have it, then you're like, then who represents this film? Who is behind it? So yeah, Snoop definitely represents South Central LA. And um, The Chronic was the year that he, you know, came up with debut album. So 92 is a big year for him.